Hey guys and girls, this is Martin from How to Make Mobile Games and welcome back to the Pong tutorial series. Uh, first of all, I just want to say sorry for the delay. Uh, I know a few of you have been waiting for this next video in the series. and uh, This week has been a little bit crazy. Um, here with our studio Cobalt Play, we've basically been working on two games and one of them is was trying to be released this week but we had a few problems and uh, the other one we were doing an update for a game but that took a little bit of time for Apple to get back to us so I've been super busy and again so my apologies for not getting back to you with these videos but hopefully um, sort of this weekend, next week and the coming weeks I'll be able to do a lot more and, and get them out there so uh, you know, stay tuned and keep keep following along, guys. It's great that you get, uh, that everyone's getting something out of this. So, um, so today I, I noticed a couple of comments from people uh, and and a, a few a few of the people that are following along with the videos had said that what they're getting is is a um, is a problem when the ball goes through the wall, and that's one of the things we're going to handle today. And we're also going to do sound and we're also going to do music. So this this should let you guys basically have a lot of fun with you know building up the game to add more atmosphere and with sounds and music and, and I'm, when it comes to music in games I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of that and I'm, I'm highly sort of moved by music in games and so and, and same with movies so I hope you guys have fun with this as well so all right let me just so just check my list so the first thing is like I just said we're getting this problem in the game what's happening is the ball here um, when when it reaches a certain speed it's going too fast it actually goes through the wall so for example over here it will it will basically it'll be moving say up and to the right and then it'll go through one of these walls or the top wall uh, sometimes it'll just go straight through the paddle now this is a problem called collision tunneling okay and um, what happens is is because the ball is moving too fast and it's not being drawn with enough frames it will just skip through collisions so for example, say this is the wall here, and this is the ball. When the ball is moving slowly, you can see it, it moves very, very smoothly because there's enough frames and it bounces off. Now if the ball is moving very fast, um, and the game is being drawn at say 30 frames a second, the ball will be here on frame 1, here on frame 2, here on frame 3, and here on frame 4. It will go through the wall, and that's what we call collision tunneling. And it's a problem with, speed, with objects that have a lot of speed. So that's what we're going to fix today by adjusting the collision. So the first thing is uh, the walls. Let's take a look at these. So I'm just going to click on one of these walls. I'm going to click on it in the hierarchy here. And I'm just going to click F over the, the scene view to zoom in. And using my middle mouse button to zoom in. And what we're going to do is in the wall box collider component here, we need to make this thicker. And that's 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 a nice easy way around it. Is basically if this if this collision is a lot thicker than the ball when it's when it's doing its frame when it's being drawn each frame, it's not going to skip over that collision because it, the collision is a lot larger. So, okay, let me just find out. So this should be the y axis. I think we're changing. Nope. I'm just use Command and Z or Control and Z to undo. Might be the x axis. Yeah, so all I'm doing is I'm left clicking and dragging here. Uh, when when the mouse is over this X axis in the box collider component here. And I'm gonna make this the size, I'm gonna make this quite large actually, I'm just gonna make this 15. Okay. And as you can see here, this green box represents the collider. So the collider can actually be bigger than the visual object. You can see here in the middle, this is the visual object here, this white bar, but the collider is massive compared to it. And that's fine, you can do that no problem. Now, as you can see, the collider is actually going into the game zone here, so the ball would bounce off here, and that looks a bit strange because it's, it's invisible in the game. As you can see, there's nothing there. So we need to offset it slightly. We just need to move it up a little bit. And I think, is it the X? Yes, it is. So I'm left, click, I'm left clicking and dragging on the X, and I'm just going to move it up. So there you can see the collision is way behind that. So I'm going to do the same for the wall. And I'm going to make this size 15. And I'm going to left click and drag on the x axis here. That looks okay. I'm just going to zoom in. And if you middle mouse, this is a little tip as well. If you middle mouse, uh, hold down the middle mouse button over the scene, uh, the scene view here, you can, I think it's pan around. You can pan the camera, which is pretty useful. And use the middle mouse to scroll in and out. 
So that looks, that looks pretty good. I think we're good there. Uh, final wall, let's go down one time. X axis, make that 15, click enter. And I'm gonna move this over by left click and dragging in the, uh, the, center, uh, the center component here or the center settings. All right, I'm just gonna make that seven just to round it up. So if we click on the walls, I'm just gonna click command uh, or to, and left click each wall or control and left click each wall if you're on a if you're on a Windows system and so that we can see all of them together and that's looking pretty good uh, if you really wanted to you could extend these up here so that you get in the diagonal as well and I think we might do that actually whilst whilst we're here so I'm gonna click on might be the Y yes it is it's the Y one and so I'm just gonna make this uh, let's say 1.3 and that should cover it up nicely. I'm going to do this for the right wall as well. 1.3. Click command. Hold hold command. Sorry, left click and and the walls or control and and left click on the walls so we can see them all. And that looks pretty good. So we're covering the corners. So that's great. The other thing is the paddle. The ball will go through the paddle as well. Of course, it's a collision object which the ball must bounce off. So we need to make the collisions a little bit bigger. Now we can't do this as well as the walls because obviously the paddle can't be huge the collision can't be like all the way around here it's just going to be strange and it's not going to look it's going to be too easy as well because the collisions are massive but we can extend the collisions down with no problem so I'm going to click on the paddle parent I'm going to click over click F over the scene view and that zooms me into the paddle and we're going to make this collision go down here so this middle one first just left click to expand paddle middle and I think it was the Y. Yes, it is. So you need to right, left click and then drag to the right to make this bigger. And I'm going to make this pretty large. And the Y center, I'm going to move this down here. That's fine. We're going to do the same for the paddle left. But I'm not going to change that one. Uh, I'm not going to change these top two bumpers here, by the way. This is because we've got the we've got these bumpers underneath here. So I don't really need to change these top two bumpers, that's fine. I'm just going to change this paddle left. And I think it's the Y one here. Yeah, so let's just drag the Y over. Uh, we might make this, yeah, let's make this four. And left click the Y offset. Make that, yeah, go right underneath there. And then the paddle right, I think, yeah. Y, set that to four, so it's the same as the left side. And drag the center so it's down. Now click on the paddle parent, and we're going to see these all together. So you can see here, these green boxes, like I said, they represent the collision boxes. And now they're a lot bigger and a lot lower, but they don't extend to the side. They don't go out over here, which is good because that's, that's not where the visual object is. This is the, the white squares here are the visual objects. So um, we're not making it too easy for the player and we're not, and the player and the ball won't hit an invisible object. So that's great. So um, it might be a little bit difficult for me to test right now because, the, because of the recording software, the frames are actually quite low, but I did test this before. The score that I was getting when um, when I was not using the collision, when the collisions were thinner like they were before, it was around 1,160. And when I extended these collisions to make them large, the score that I got was like 2,800. And the way that I tested this, and you guys can test this as well, is if you just click on the paddle parent, click on R, and then hold this uh, the, the x-axis scaler, and just drag this out to the side. Okay. And what I'm just doing here is I'm just testing the wall collisions. So what we can do is click play. And you can see it's going to bounce off the walls. It's going to bounce off the bottom paddle as well. And the only reason I've just dragged that out there is so that we're giving ourselves a, um, a collision at the bottom here, just an automatic collision, so we can see the ball bouncing around and see, see if it does go through any of the walls. And also if it goes through this bottom paddle as well, this sort of bottom area, this middle of the paddle. So, like I say, the problem is with the screen software, 
is that it slows down the frame rate a little bit, so we hopefully shouldn't get too many issues here. It shouldn't go through that quick. I mean, it shouldn't. We shouldn't get the collision tunneling issue that much. So I'm just going to leave this to play for a second. And it's looking pretty good. It's actually going up to 1400, 1500 automatically. And this ball is moving pretty fast right now. Um, you will still get some collision tunneling once this ball gets super fast. So, but for a player to actually stop this, he's going to have to be, uh, he's going to have to be a robot. It's going to have to be data from Star Trek to stop this. Yeah, this is this is going crazy. I mean, we've got 2,200, 2,300, and this ball is going everywhere. Now, it should go through the wall in a moment, because it's going that fast. There we go, and it's gone. But the speed at which that ball was traveling is probably way beyond what any player will be able to like, sort of perceive or grab. So, uh, you know, that's one way around the collision, the collision tunneling issue. There are other ways around it. You can actually adjust the ball's position using scripting. And I've done this before, is basically you calculate the position of the ball and where it should be, and if it should have gone through the wall, and if it should have gone through the wall or not. Or if the paddle, for example, was below the ball as it was going down, but did the ball go under it? And you can sort of say yes or no, and if that if it did go under it, then you reset the ball position to be above it. That's that's okay when you're working with a 40 feet, 45 degree angle ball. It is it is possible to code, and I've done that before. But since we're sort of using um, uh, physics objects with the ball here, and we're just wanting the ball to react to the environment using the uh, the rigid body uh, component, then we're not going to do anything. We're not going to try to change the ball position with code. So this is an easy way around it, and it's and it's also. Uh, it kind of fixes the problem in a way that the player isn't going to perceive any problem with the collisions.